It's day six of the Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour final. Hikaru Nakamura was leading going into this day. He just needed to win the set to win the whole championship. Magnus Carlsen, of course, needed to win the set just to get even. I'm going to show you game one, which was yet another extraordinary encounter. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon links down there. So they continued where they left off last night. It was another Nimzo Indian. Carlson again with the white pieces. Now he didn't go for the Zamish with a3 here. Instead, he played e3, the Rubenstein variation. Well, that is much more respectable. And then c5, and knight e2 is reasonable, d5. But still, I mean, this whole opening, the whole Nimzo has a good reputation for black. And now Carlson played a3. So here it's a little bit different. Bishop takes. Now you can play knight takes c3, but really white has lost so much time in manoeuvring this knight over. That actually is, is well known uh, in theory to be absolutely fine for black. But Carlson played pawn takes bishop. So it's the same structure as we had before, at least from white's viewpoint but black has a different structure so with the pawn on d5 that's very different from when the pawn is on d6 and then black has this blockade of c4 but here obviously white can get rid of that c pawn so it's very very different nevertheless this also is quite uh, okay for black's well-known position um, I've played this before with black. I've I've gone knight c6 and e5. I quite like that. Queen c7 played here, also quite decent. So black threatens to take on d4 and hit the bishop. So that's why the bishop drops back. And now pawn to b6. So this bishop comes into the game and comes into the game on a very good diagonal. Now that this bishop has moved from c4... The bishop takes its place. Bishop b2. The moment those bishops don't look like they're up to much. Let's see what happens. Knight c6. Rook c1. And here, actually, Carlson has played this exact position before. And there, Aronian played rook fd8. That was a quick play game in 2017. And actually, Carlson went on to win. Uh, rook c8 played by Nakamura instead and c4 this is actually very similar to the strategy that Carlson employed against Aronian pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn so now we have these typical hanging pawns and now those bishops start to look a little bit better and you can see that with the rook on the same file as the queen then if d5 and the, and the c file opens, then the queen could be attacked. So therefore the queen comes over to e7. Now one could simply play rook e1, a rather light rook e1 actually, opposite the queen. And then, well it's a similar kind of thing, d5 starts to look very effective. And the queen is vulnerable. I like those bishops in that case. But Carlsen was in a hurry. He played d5. That's an extraordinary move. Yes, of course, you want to get this bishop flying across the board and this one going as well. But after pawn takes pawn, of course, he can't recapture because the knight could be taken. But his idea was this. Rook e1. So now he's threatening to capture. But Nakamura took on c4. Now, of course, you don't want to exchange those bishops. Knight g3 attacks the queen. Now, the queen has to keep hold of that knight. If it moves 
well, let, let me see. If it moves to c5, then uh, the bishop will just take the knight, and that shatters the kingside pawn. So the queen has to come to d8, keeping hold of that knight on f6. Now, once again, you don't want to exchange off those bishops. Bishop b1. So now we see Carlson's idea. He's given up two pawns just to get those bishops going. I mean, he really is playing in such a kind of straightforward, attacking way. Um, really uncompromising, as, as we've seen him play throughout this tournament, actually. And that they are really dangerous in combination with the knight and potentially the queen as well. B5 from Nakamura, good move. Having protected the bishop, he can then push the d-pawn and shut out that bishop. Carlson moves the knight into that wonderful outpost on f5. And combining with the bishop and potentially the queen, and not to mention the bishop on b1, very dangerous indeed. d4 from Nakamura, very good move. Got to shut out one of the bishops at the very least. And of course, if Carlson were to take that, then the exchanges would just kind of diffuse the tension in the position, and that would be playable for black. You can see how important that move b5 was to protect the bishop. But no, Carlson doesn't want that. Queen d2 to bring the queen across to g5. Now, rook e8 looks like a sensible move. Um, Nakamura played bishop e6. Now, his intention is obviously to exchange off the knight, but it's not so easy to do that. Rook c5 might have caught him by surprise. Because if bishop takes knight... Bishop takes bishop, and now, obviously, the rook is attacked. And if the rook moves up, then rook here, and that pin is actually very uncomfortable. So after rook c5, Nakamura played a6, just to protect that b-pawn. And here, Carlsen took the plunge. Knight takes pawn on g7. And here he played queen g5. In fact, bishop c1 might be even stronger with the idea of queen h6 and bishop g5. Nevertheless, queen g5 is also pretty good. At least incredibly dangerous. And queen h4. So you can see that the bishop and the queen combine. The knight defends that pawn. But, well, there could be chances to dislodge that knight. Rook g8 played, which looks normal. Uh, rook e8 was also possible, actually. Um, and here, well, it feels like this rook is about to swing across to the king side, but no. Rook takes knight. Rook takes rook. And now bishop takes pawn. So the idea was simply that this bishop now enters the game. So look at those two bishops. Mate in one, threatened. Remember that knight on f6 is pinned. Bishop takes knight is also a threat. So how does Nakamura get out of this one? Well, he has to step out with the king. Well, I say it that there is another defense, which is to play bishop f5, give up that bishop, and then put the rook in the way. But this is certainly better for white. You can choose when to take that, and this still looks very dangerous. So Nakamura went for king g7, protecting the knight. Queen h7 check, exploiting that pin, of course, that the knight can't take the queen. And the queen is defended by the bishop. King f8. Queen h6 check. King e8. Bishop takes knight. So the bishop attacks the queen, which had to come to a5. Gains tempo against the rook. 
And now the queen has done its job on the king side and comes back into the middle. Queen e3 protects the rook. And now queen b6 from Nakamura. So he's desperate for an exchange of queens here, obviously. And here Nakamura started shaking his head as though he'd missed something. And Carlson said afterwards that he fell for it. He assumed that Nakamura had missed this move, rook d1. He thought this was winning on the spot, and he went for it. There's actually a much stronger move. Bishop e4 is the move. And if queen takes queen, then bishop takes rook check. And if rook d6, queen f3, just avoid the queen exchange. Let's say king d7, and now h4. So basically, white just holds the position. Those bishops are just all powerful. They control so many squares across the board. The rooks, dare I say it, they are split. They're not operating together. The king is staggering around in the middle. Also doesn't help the situation. And that pawn is ready just to step forward to the queening square. It must be winning for white. So Carlson has done all the hard work, but with rook d1, well, he wants to get in on d8, of course, rook d8. But instantly Nakamura played rook d6, and it's game on again. Of course, queen takes queen would allow rook takes rook checkmate. And Carlson doesn't want to exchange queens here. He doesn't want to exchange rooks. So he had to play bishop d4, which is a very uncomfortable self-pin. Now here, Nakamura moved the queen. My computer thinks that b4 is a good move here. Exchanging a pair of pawns, but, well... You have to believe the computer, but for a, from a human point of view, it looks funny to sort of perhaps open another diagonal. But queen c6 played. Bishop e4, attacking the queen. Those bishops still look good, but that is an annoying pin. h3, finally Carlsen manages to provide his king with an escape square. King d7, perhaps preparing to bring the rook into play rook d2 yeah he wants to Carlson wants to break this pin rook e8 looks completely normal perhaps setting up some kind of pin here and here once again Carlson missed a very promising continuation and once again there are reasons why he didn't see this Bishop e5 wasn't played. It's really strong. And here's the idea that after rook takes rook, you don't capture, but instead you play queen a7. These kind of lateral queen moves, in my experience, are very difficult to see. And this actually forces a checkmate. Now, black isn't forced to go in for that. Nevertheless, bishop e5 is very strong. You have to give up an exchange. Um... Not an easy move to see at all. King h2 instead from Carlsen. That's a kind of typical move that you play. You know, you get your king off the back rank. And it's much safer, basically. Bishop d5. Still actually very difficult. Well, I was going to say for both sides. Probably more difficult for black than white. But it's still incredibly tricky. Bishop f5 is a good move. Check. King has to keep hold of that rook. Bishop e6, and now bishop d3 is very strong. Queen c6 is the last chance for black here, but queen a4 was a mistake. Bishop e5. And this opens up the diagonal, and this is actually fatal. Rook d5 and queen a7 check. So Carlson did get in this lateral check, and now it's game over. Here, Nakamura resigned. If king c6, then queen c7 is checkmate. Well, those bishops prove their worth. And 
it's a vindication for Carlson's choice of the Nimzo Indian again. I mean, but really a very brave decision to go in for such a double-edged position in game one. Um, and, you know, round about here, you can think, Ugh, those bishops are pretty horrible. But Carlson, well, he managed to engineer a position with that incredible double pawn sacrifice where those bishops did look very powerful. And he got there. So that was just game one. Uh, Carlson survived a bit of a scare in game two. Game three was drawn, and then Carlson actually won game four, so he closed out the set. It's now three all. And tomorrow will be the decider. They'll play one final set, and the winner of that set will win the tournament, will get the title. It has been quite extraordinary. And, well, today was, from Carlson's point of view, even more remarkable, in that he'd injured himself... Uh, going out for a run before the game and he's, he hurt his back and he was obviously in some discomfort during this entire match. So, uh, well, we'll see what happens with that. He needs needs a good night's sleep and some painkillers, I think. Anyway, it's all sort of set up for a final set. Thanks for watching.